morning everybody. So, we are looking at uh, what happens to waves when they are attenuated. So, we looked at a model problem where we have some kind of uh, attenuating medium and we are look, trying to express how the standing waves would look like. So, we are having a real omega and we are assuming a complex frequent a complex wave number k and then we are trying to express the uh, left turning wave and right turning wave as uh, in, in terms of this omega and k and so on and we uh, wrote expressions for left turning wave and right turning wave last class and some students told me that they could not get the final answer. So, I will continue with it. So, putting together we will get p prime equal to p naught times e power minus alpha x e power i times omega t minus k x. This was the right turning wave plus e power alpha x e power i times omega t plus k x. This um, can be we will expand it for convenience for p naught times e power minus alpha x e power minus i k x plus e power alpha x e power plus i k x times e power i omega t which we can say is p hat e power i omega t where p hat is indeed the complex amplitude. So, we need p hat is a, is a complex number. So, it has both amplitude and phase and we will try to get expressions for these things. So, uh, p hat itself is p naught times e power minus alpha x e power minus i k x plus e power alpha x e power i k x and so we can um, try to recast it in a more convenient way. Um, so, p hat over p naught equal to e power minus alpha x into cos k x minus i sin k x plus e power alpha x into cos k x plus i sin k x. This is the uh, fundamental thing in complex numbers. So, this we can recast as if you take the cos k x out then we will get e power alpha minus alpha x plus e power alpha x plus i times sin k x into e power alpha x minus e power minus alpha x and if you multiply and divide by 2. you would get this. So, we can write p hat over uh, 2 p naught right equal to cos k x cos hyperbolic alpha x plus i uh, sin k x sin hyperbolic alpha x. So, this is a neat result. So, from this it is quite trivial to get the uh, actual um, amplitude of this complex number and the phase. Uh, just write the amplitude p hat over 2 p naught equal to square root of we square this square this add them and take the square root or that is the same as uh, p hat times p hat conjugate. And let me show you a plot of this. I mentioned to you, you can draw these plots with anything. You can write a computer program and plot it, or you can write a MATLAB program, or you can do it in Mathematica. Um, I just have deliberately chosen Excel, which is really a simple sheet for calculating budget and so on, but we can do it even there. So, um, uh, so this is the uh, 
variation of uh, pressure uh, I have written P over uh, P naught actually it is P over 2 P naught uh, I have uh, drawn with reference to normalize it with respect to the value at the end and you can uh, see a clear pattern that is first pattern you notice is this minimum values they almost go up like a straight line right you can see where the mouse is the, the minimas are actually going up like a straight line and the maximas are actually also going up but kind of like a curve like a parabola. So in, in fact uh, if you did not have damping what would happen all these minimas will line up at the same place. If you had just uh, a standing wave with some admittance and depending on the admittance all minimas will go up or come down together but if you have damping one thing you would see is uh, the minimas will, will change that is because at you are having some kind of cancellation at the minima but the in a uh, in the case where there is no damping the left running wave and right running wave have same strength or if, if you have a perfect termination and if it is not a perfect termination they have different strength but the strength will be same throughout uh, wherever it is going. Here the strength of the left running wave and the right running wave are different in different parts of the duct. So therefore the cancellation is also different which is why you get this kind of a shape. So one way to check if it is an attenuated wave so the, there are two ways you can have losses one is uh, waves going out through a impedance kind of boundary condition that can have loss or you can have loss like a volumetric damping. So if it is a volumetric damping one signature to look for is the how the uh, minimum values change uh, and I, as I told the physical reason is because the standing wave has a, a, a different uh, values amplitudes at a different location each of the left running wave and right running wave because we uh, see that uh, these are attenuated in different ways one is attenuated as it moves to the right one is attenuated as it moves to the left. The second thing I want to denote is the uh, is the phase. So if you are starting from the loudspeaker uh, and you go towards the hard end and as you are moving the, attenuate, the wave is attenuated so the amplitude keeps coming down and then you get reflected and then uh, so the uh, incoming wave was a left running wave and the outgoing wave was a right, uh, right running wave and the right running wave gets continued to get even more damped. So near the source it is predominantly going like a traveling wave which is why you see this kind of a variation it is almost straight but then uh, you see this curves and, and so on afterwards and the energy is going from right to left which is why you have a domination of the uh, left running wave here uh, in, in this particular system and uh, for the sake of completeness we will uh, derive expression for the velocity amplitude also are there any questions this is okay yes you just uh, face of this expression so that will be tan inverse sorry, I have to stand this. tan inverse of sin, uh, sin kx sin hyperbolic alpha x divided by cos kx cos hyperbolic alpha x so it will be tan inverse tan kx uh, tan hyperbolic alpha x so you have analytical formula. Uh, alpha is the uh, uh, complex wave number so uh, k equal to so alpha is the uh, complex part of the wave number that is what represents this uh, attenuation uh, so I will rephrase what you said alpha does not cause attenuation alpha represents attenuation something causes something physical causes attenuation we are trying to represent it what exactly happens it it can be as Vishnu pointed out water vapor in the system which takes away the energy or you can have uh, some kind of droplets which take away the energy or you can have some kind of chemical engineering system like a packed bed uh, or absorbing um, porous medium uh, like a stack in a thermoacoustic engine. So the uh, individual physics of the attenuation can be different in different circumstances but alpha we are representing that within the linear framework using this alpha okay that is clear you have a 
I remember you wrote a paper on this damping and all that stuff years back. So, if anybody has any question, you can ask Rajesh. Rajesh has published something on this more complex problem than this. Any other question? Uh, so, velocity is likewise quite simple to get. Again, we go back to the uh, linearized momentum equation. So, we can from this you will get u hat equal to minus 1 over i omega rho So, if you you just need to differentiate this expression. So, you will get terms like cos k x sin hyperbolic alpha x and cos hyperbolic alpha x times minus sin k x and, and so on. So, each of these terms when you differentiate becomes two terms. So, So, this is what you would get. So, it was like if you square this, we square this term and square this term. I will not bother to write the constants. So, you will get cos squared kx sin hyperbolic squared alpha x plus sin squared kx cos squared hyperbolic alpha x minus let me write this here, 2 cos k x sin h alpha x sin k x cos h alpha x plus we square these terms. So, you will get This term will cancel with this, and these uh, are these are the same terms actually. So this would be equal to two, right? Yeah, cos squared k x plus sin squared k x. So, I should just say proportional, but because there are this minus 1 over i omega rho 2 p naught. So, if you take the modulus of this, you will get omega squared rho squared 4 p naught also there. Uh, so, this expression uh, is what I have plotted in uh, here in this Excel graph as. Uh, u over u naught versus k x. It also follows a similar pattern the minimas keep going up and the maximas are also going up, but the minimas go up kind of linearly. This one goes more like a parabola and even those things you can show with approximate relations, <coughs> but I will stop here. Uh, so, in uh, summary we have taken a look at uh, how, uh, how a standing wave formed by two damped waves can be uh, represented. Uh, as opposed to the earlier case where we studied, we did not have the waves being damped. We the waves while reflecting lost some amplitude that is all. In the in the earlier case we studied when we were dealing with the impedance tube. So, you can actually in principle do an impedance tube technique with damping also. So, now I assumed that the um, one end is perfectly rigid. So, I said reflection happens perfectly. 
but you can also relax that and apply appropriate admittance boundary condition there and work out this problem and it should not be too difficult. I will let you do that. So, work out this problem for a general admittance and having this alpha as attenuation that is the homework. So, I will pause for a minute if you have any questions I can answer that and then we will move to next topic. Okay, I will write it down. So, we had some kind of source and we have a rigid plate and we have a medium that attenuates. So, we had uh, k tilde as the wave number which is complex which is k minus i alpha. So, we keep all that, but we, so we do the same problem, but we remove this rigid plate and we say here I have um, a admittance boundary condition equal to and then work out how the wave would look like. Once you have p hat amplitude, we can also get the amplitudes and the complex amplitude, we can get the amplitude and the phase and uh, plot the, so this is 1. So, uh, like I said, we never know by looking at something what is the boundary condition and so on. The way to know is to hear the sound or measure the sound in the standing wave, you get the acoustic field and from that we can deduce what kind of loss it is. So, you could have a loss purely in the form of admittance loss or gain also or you can, so that is like a surface. If you remember uh, we had a uh, this uh, p prime b prime uh, over integrated over surface. So, you can have that kind of term or you can have like a loss in the volume a loss or you can also have gain like Vishnu was saying if you had uh, heat addition then uh, you would have a gain. Uh, so, you can have volumetric losses or gains as well as surface losses or, or gains both are possible. So, the way to get the feel as an engineer is to have a good feel of the forward problem. So, given a perfect condition how does the wave look like, given an imperfect and admitted condition how does the wave look like, given a perfect end condition, but there is damping how does the wave look like, given now you look at the next step, you given an imperfect end and or, or admittance condition and a damping how does the wave look like and then you step up uh, given a temperature gradient how the wave looks like that is what we are going to look next, given temperature gradient and damping how does the wave look like, given temperature gradient damping and losses at the boundary how does the wave look like. So, you have to build this field by playing with the equations and then you also look at the actual experiment and then you see uh, how things are. You, you can never uh, see a end and tell straight, straight away. Eventually, when you have a lot of experience, you can look at a system and uh, just say uh, what, is, what, is, what is causing. I just tell you a story, uh, this may have to be edited out of this <laughs> video thing, but we were trying to uh, make a thermoacoustic engine in CSIR and, and the idea was to actually collect solar light, set up a temperature gradient and uh, drive this engine and what, uh, and this there was a big uh, director general of CSIR was coming to see this so that and it has to work well so that you get funding and this thing was not working. So, the uh, uh, my, my former student Bala is now um, scientist in CSIR. So, he came here and took some of our students were there and they right away said that uh, he has to reseal the whole thing, the seal is not perfect and he said there is no, I mean there is nothing is going out, it is perfect, but they said insisted that the seal is not very, 
very good and the losses. Uh, yes, actually it was true when he resealed the whole thing, the thing made sound. So that was this P prime B prime time average taking out all the energy that was put in that it was not able to grow. So you, you this there was some kind of uh, acoustic energy being added by the interaction between the heat addition and the sound field. So that is like a driving term, but equally important is the losses, the losses were taking out the uh, whatever was put in, so you never had oscillations. And how did this guy, my student tell that it was there, eventually by feel, but initially you play with all this uh, simple expressions and also with the play with the wave field in the tube, that is you put microphone and keep microphones, measure them and how the waves look like and so on and then you develop a feel and then you have like a, you can tell just by looking that this is what happened. I think uh, uh, there is a book I read sometime back, Blink or something like that, have you, have you read by Malcolm Gladwell, this, huh? the same guy who wrote the book Outliers, he said people uh, who have good uh, judgment they can just tell answer in a jiffy, so but you have to develop it, it does not get, okay I am a star, I will judge everything in milliseconds, yes they are experts judge in milliseconds, but they have worked, uh, I do not know, I mean years on this to develop this, but uh, so, but you cannot, you have to go through this process, just let us like tying a shoelace or learning how to control a football and, or, or, or dribbling a hockey ball uh, or playing violin, I mean it does not come overnight and putting night out and all that, but you have to be with the thing and eventually like the martial art people say, the weapon is not something beyond you, but it is it is like part of your body, so something like that. So that kind of feel uh, comes by just writing the expression, see how you can simplify it, see whether you can actually get a linear, uh, whether the minimas are going linearly, I have actually the answer here, but I am not going to show you, but I hope on, on personalities to it and how the maxima will go up and play with the numbers and see. So that is quite critical to be able to get a feel for waves. It, it's, th this exercise is very useful because it is just not for sound in a duct and all that, any waves, I mean it can be vibration of string or some other lamp waves or, or electromagnetic waves, it is a fundamental phenomena that we are looking at and, and the fundamental mechanism with which waves uh, build on each other or cancel on each other. So I really hope that you will uh, play with this. Now the next portion is the very first day I remember I was asked a question that I was trying to derive a wave equation assuming constant temperature and I think those guys over there made some nasty comments saying that uh, uh, it, the combustor how can temperature be constant absolutely right and that is when I told my boring story about the professor and the ring and so on, so whatever I can do I will do. Uh, I, I have to uh, tell you one more story, I, uh, there are a lot of stories I will tell in, in the beginning. Okay. But I must acknowledge some of my collaborators from whom I learned a lot, uh, I, will, I will show their stuff. So, okay. so, so we are going to speak about uh, sound propagation through gradients of axial temperature gradient and this is quite important uh, for thermoacoustics because thermoacoustics deal with temperature changes, heat release and so on and you can never have combustion and heat added without change of temperature, I mean it does not exist whatever be the assumptions you make, it, it just does not hold water. Uh, so, we will uh, revise or, or go over some of the things that we did earlier. So, for a homogeneous uh, 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 constant area duct, we had the solutions P prime is F of T minus X over C plus G times uh, T, uh, uh, G of T plus X over C. So, if, uh, so if the, uh, if you have a duct and you do not change gas properties or characteristic impedance is rho c, which means that a wave will keep on going, it does not reflect unless it sees some change in the impedance, which is what we call reflection and transmission and so on. Otherwise if it is just a medium of properties rho c, you would have the wave continue to go, a left running wave will continue to go left and right running wave will continue to go right as long as there is a tube and the tube ends will start getting reflected back. Alternately, if your media properties changes, uh, you can have reflection. So, if you uh, look at this, uh, I have to use the mouse because that is they are recording directly from this, uh, so I will not point there. So, please pay attention to the mouse. So, we can think of 
gas property uh, I mean gas property really changes uh, smoothly, but we can think of it as a large number of uh, reflection and transmission in a duct composed of a series of small discontinuities. So, you can think of each you can discretize the duct into um, uh, a small small elements or we can also have variable area duct that is also a possibility uh, and you have uh, different um, sections having different properties and different areas, but we can think of in each section you have a constant area. So, have an incident wave coming and at each of these interfaces you can think of it as a reflection, although in reality it is a, uh, it's a continuous process, but I, I mentioned this uh, just to uh, bring in the idea that we can I guess imagine that uh, sometimes people have difficulty in believing that why will a gas reflect your moving. Uh, so, we can imagine that if there is a discontinuity in the medium you can have reflections right, I think that is imaginable. So, if you have a series of discontinuities then each of the discontinuity would reflect. So, you can approximate a continuous variation to a series of discontinuities no matter how approximate it is. So, it, it is in principle ok to have reflection throughout the duct right, is that ok. Uh, so, uh, we can think of what is called the W k b approximation it actually comes from quantum mechanics uh, I forget the expansion of W k b, but it is also called W k b j approximation. So, we say that the gas properties or duct area changes occur over scales that are long relative to that of the disturbance. So, let us that, that, that means relative to the disturbance things are changing very very slowly or, or uh, the scales are very long. So, then what happens is the amplitude would rescale to conserve energy flux that is let us imagine we are having a right running wave which is f of t minus x over c. Now, if you think that the area is changing for example, So, you can have one case where the duct is like this another case where you have like a horn or something the area is changing ok. So, we can um, so we know that if uh, something is coming in the same thing should go out. So, if energy is conserved and uh, and you do not produce any driving here whatever power that comes in what is power? power as a precise definition acoustic power as a precise definition. You can look at the notes and see what it is ah p prime u prime times area. area absolutely. So, that should be conserved right. So, uh, we have let us say p prime u prime and here you have p prime u prime, but the area is different. So, both p prime and u prime has to change such that p prime u prime a should be constant uh, I mean things would be different if some power was energy was generated in the duct or taken out or something, but that not happening whatever power is flowing here should flow out through here. So, this would mean that um, you will have same kind of f of t minus x over c, but let us say we have a area term square root of a and here you have u prime of x is going normally it goes like 1 over rho c times f, but let us put a a, a power half. So, if you multiply this out you have area times this term times this term. So, let me rewrite a times f over square root of a times 1 over rho c f over square root of a. So, the square root square root and a can cancel. So, you will get f square over rho c and you will get the uh, uh, you will get the uh, power to be uh, conserved. So, uh, this is a hand waving explanation, but you can actually uh, do it mathematically this w k b approximation and get this formula uh, that is possible I am not attempting to do that, but this idea is to get you the physical principle. So, is this part clear if this is not clear there is no point in going forward everybody is writing. So, either everything was clear and they are summarizing or nothing is understood. So, whatever I said has to be written down so that you can figure out later. Derek, okay. So I'll pause for 30 seconds for you to finish your summary. Okay. 
So let us now step up the complexity. Let us say we have, I mean I started with area change because that's, this is a very trivial situation to imagine that we can uh, uh, write by hand the answer. So let us say we are area is changing and density is changing and speed of sound is changing. Density and speed of sound will change with temperature. Now usually when the mean Mach number is small, we must have studied from gas dynamics that P plus gamma m squared is a constant. So as long as your m is quite small, like I do not know what is small, 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 or something, pressure would not change much. And again, how small is small, we will not get into that. But let us for the time being assume that pressure is constant. In the limit, there is no flow pressure will surely be a constant, right. Uh, so uh, here, you know, your rho is changing, C is changing. So we have to cancel those also out so that your final intensity is not a function of uh, x at all, okay. So if you, for example, take P goes like to make a conjecture and like I said, you can derive some of this rigorously, but I would not do that right at the moment. So let us say P is rho bar x uh, C uh, power half and there is an area here and U also has a rho C here power half over A. Now when you take P prime U prime times A, now the A will cancel with this 1 over root A and 1 over root A and uh, 1 over rho C will cancel with there is a square root of rho C, there is a square root of rho C. So what is remaining is these things of course with the units being appropriately put in. So you take out the uh, dependence on X or temperature, is that clear? So th this is at the moment a conjecture but like I said for high frequency assumption you can derive this uh, with that assumption. Yeah, Derek, something is bothering. Now we will see how this depends on temperature in a moment, but I will just, I think it is good to write these things down rather than just see it as some slideshow and all that, because once you write you get a feel of these things. Uh, now uh, one more thing I wish to point out that normally in the previous slide we wrote T minus X over C. Now I am writing T minus some Psi over C integral from 0 to X. Now why is that? Because early, we see my characteristics is dx over dt equal to plus or minus c. Now if c is a constant, then x is equal to ct plus constant. But if c is not a constant, then I have to, uh, uh, my equation becomes dt equal to dx over c. So I integrate this from let us say 0 to t and 0 to x and use this psi as a dummy variable and I note explicitly that speed of sound is varying with distance. So this explains this uh, fancy looking argument inside, but there is nothing fancy about it. It is just that speed of sound is changing and so X minus CT has to be appropriately modified to do that. Is this okay? Okay, so now uh, we can say that rho c, rho will be p over rt, you can try to, sorry, you can try to write this out, uh, rho will be p over rt and c will be square root of gamma rt. So if you multiply this out, you would get this gamma p bar squared power one fourth times rt for a perfect guess. Why is it changing? So let us say we assume that there is no mean flow or very low velocity mean flow because you cannot sustain a temperature gradient really without having mean flow, I mean for a long time. <coughs> so we, but we say that mean flow can be neglected and therefore, I mean our um, objective is to say that the mean pressure is constant and also gamma and R are constant. Now this is a questionable assumption for something like a solid rocket motor and all that. You, I taught propulsion last semester where we harped quite a bit on how gamma can change, how um, R can change, how the molecular weight can change and so on. But in a gas turbine type of combustor where you burn quite lean, I think uh, this is a reasonable assumption because uh, uh, we are not having that much significant change in uh, gamma or Cp and Cv and so on. But in a rocket, this is a uh, bad assumption. So if you make these assumptions, you can say P is 
f of t minus dx over c integral times we had the square root of n and t power 1 over 4 because this rho c uh, term becomes this and u goes like t power 1 over 4 on the numerator that is because you have 1 over rho c which you plug back in in terms of temperature and you would get a t power 1 fourth here times this f of t minus integral d psi over c 0 to x times square root of a. Now, I will just pause a few moments for the, so that you can uh, whenever you see equation it is important to stop at the equation smile at the equation and then the equation will also smile back at you. So, uh, if you are not smile I think it's time to smile. So, the screen is intelligent screen it just things that I want to change and it changes and so on I will annoyed with this. So, you can see that uh, earlier we had a root a here and then we said that we have to rescale with rho c over a term and so it, it in the end we want to talk in terms of temperature because we are burning something we are getting a temperature then you may have heat transfer after that. So, uh, the uh, uh, for example, if you have combustion in one end there will be a rapid temperature rise, but then uh, as the heat transfer happens the temperature will fall down also. Now, uh, so you will have the amplitudes are rescaling such that there is a 1 over square root of a dependence in the denominator and there is a very interestingly there is a t power 1 fourth here and there is a t power 1 fourth in the numerator here. So, you would see that pressure amplitudes are coming down if you increase temperature, but actually velocity will go up if you increase temperature and if you decrease temperature pressure will go up, but velocity will come down. So, pressure amplitude if you look at the standing wave and you see the maximas go up and all that. Uh, do not conclude immediately that uh, there is driving or if maximums are falling do not conclude that oh there is attenuated wave and so on. It could be that there is a temperature gradient and so you have to look at both temperature and uh, sorry you have to look at both the acoustic pressure and acoustic velocity only then we can conclude what is happening. So, we should not jump in a haste about this. Now, uh, this uh, uh, variation of how, how the propagation is being influenced by temperature has lot of implication not just in thermoacoustics in lot of other subjects. For example, this uh, ultrasound uh, uh, imaging for uh, people who have studied breast cancer or, or trying to image uh, unborn babies, uh, there uh, you send sound and, and you look at how the sound is being uh, scattered or reflected by of course, the 3D problem more complicated, uh, how, how the impedance changes in our body are affecting that. And if you have like a cancerous tissue it will show up in a different way, if you have a, a cyst in the ovary or something uh, uh, which is due to certain illness then you would actually see it because those things have a different uh, uh, a different impedance characteristic impedance compared to the medium around it. So, anytime some new growth happens inside the body it would reflect the sound waves that are set in. So, uh, that is the reason uh, why we are able to image. You also use this for uh, imaging. Uh, 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 I mean to, uh, the uh, what are the people who study things hidden cities and all that not geologists archaeologists. archaeologists yeah. So, they try to find out if there is a city under that. So, the, what they will do is a, a way they will do a small explosion and they send the waves and they try to image the waves back and look if some Mohanjadara or Harappa or something like that is <laughs> hidden underneath and then they can try to image that with this uh, imaging technology ok. So, so you have uh, a, a lot more applications and there are even more applications while I mentioned it. You must have heard about a shock wave lithotripsy. So, uh, the waves are affected by uh, change in impedance also the area ratio there it is a cylindrical medium. So, cylindrically you can converge as you impart uh, the waves. So, the if you send in acoustic waves as they converge to the kidney stone you actually uh, the waves steepen uh, just like you have this square root of a. Uh, so, if A is coming, uh, so it is like a it is it, not really a variable area duct, but it is like a uh, 2 pi r kind of convergence. So, r, r, as r is coming uh, coming down, so you will have a square root of r kind of term there. So, your amplitudes will go up and as amplitudes go up the wave will then go into nonlinear regime make a shock and the shock will uh, destroy the uh, 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 shock will have high temperature and then it can break up the uh, kidney stone. 
So, this has uh, this is really not a very specific thermoacoustic subject or anything, although I am that is what I have studied. So, I will uh, teach all those things. Uh, if you wear blue glasses, world will appear blue. So, if you appear or if you wear thermoacoustic glasses, everything in the world appears as thermoacoustics. But I had friends who did this uh, study of shock waves, and, and I had a friend who used to study how to do this shock wave lithotripsy on very fat people because they cannot fit in the machine and then how to uh, do it and, and then so on it then you will have to put them in a water tub which will have water will have same kind of impedance as our human body and so on. So, I have some idea about these things I also have a, mm, a doctor friend who is to scan tigers the tigers also have the same problem uh, as human beings. So, she was specialized in uh, doing ultrasound scan of tigers, but tiger has to be made unconscious first. <laughs> Uh, so, I have uh, learned quite a bit about these things from um, non aerospace kind of people and it is a very uh, and it's a, so, what, what I am teaching is in general much more general than uh, what uh, is just for the combustors and so on. So, now we go from the equation so far I did hand waving. So, now we are going to uh, go with the equations. So, I think you had a homework to derive these equations I trust everybody has derived I see some naughty smiles which means many of you have not derived or uh, they are coming in the exam. So do not care. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at least you know first one is continuity you heard this what is continuity equation? Uh, what is the continuity equation? Can you give the uh, equation? Manoj what is continuity equation? Just close your eyes and say uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> so, should I jump out of the window or go out and jump out? Huh? Mini? What is continuity equation? Huh? Density times, area times? Velocity. Ah. Is anyone coming to jump out with me? <laughs> ah. So, rho AV if it is constant, you will not hear me speak. So, the question was what is conservation of mass and the answer was rho a v is a constant and I am trying to propose that if rho a v if God made rho a v constant you would not hear me speak anything. What do you say? Why? Yeah, Ganesh. What do you think? I am right or wrong? Big smile means you are you can be either with me or with me. Or what? You are with both of us. It can be right and it can be wrong. What is continuity equation? Yeah, yeah you get yourself. I forgot your name. Huh? Ah, what is continuity equation? Is rho AV is constant? Is it continuity equation or is that momentary? What is continuity equation? So, you see there was some other term in front yeah. So, we cannot throw this away this nowhere is it mentioned that uh, uh, this term is I mean. So, you are having a compressible medium and uh, if you throw away this term then there is really no sound. Similarly, if you ask how to write momentum equation again people would probably throw away the first term, but without that there is no uh, there is no sound I mean. So, for sound is an unsteady phenomenon and we have to keep track of unsteady terms. So, all that God said this when he created the word he said if mass is coming in and mass is going out whatever is coming in minus whatever is going out equal to whatever is remaining there. He did not say nothing should remain there. Did God say that in any religion? Huh? He did not. He said if something is coming in and something is going out, balance will stay inside. Okay, That is all he said. So, why is rho a v a constant? In fact, I asked you many the same question some time back and you gave the same answer. So, this is what is called uh, conditioning. So, these elephants they are chained when they are small babies and uh, 
when the elephant becomes big they can peacefully break the chain but it thinks that it cannot because it is always having the chain it has to have the chain so rho av has been always constant because we probably don't know how to deal with the unsteady term so therefore we keep it so i think uh, it is very important i think i don't know you have to probably print the slide and uh, keep it in your room or something with uh, do rho by do t written in red letters and with some yellow paint around it or something and say that huh to get undo the conditioning i'm, I'm serious uh, uh. so we have this equation so i, I hope uh, we will because we if we uh, by instinct come out with rho wave is constant then there's nothing to do actually after that because sound is i mean the classical wave equation 1 over c squared do squared p by do t squared equal to do squared p by do x squared if there is no do squared p by do t squared then there is no <laughs> there's nothing left actually huh so so we then have to linearize the equations which is what we studied we in the second class or third class so if you linearize the equations and for a change i'm working with momentum and energy equation and i explained that uh, for the classical case it doesn't matter because continuity equation would uh, boil down to the same as energy equation but here it won't look exactly like but you can choose to work with whichever one you want i choose to work with energy because it's convenient as you would see so the first one is the linearized momentum equation the second one is the energy equation so if you differentiate if you do the same algebra that we did so if you eliminate uh, the term d squared u over dt squared uh, sorry d squared u over dx dt from these two terms you will get a wave equation in terms of pressure and if you eliminate uh, pressure that is you you have this if you differentiate this such that you have a term d squared p over dx dt and here also you differentiate this with x so that you have the term d squared p over dx dt if you eliminate this term you would get a wave equation in terms of velocity so the uh, so you'll get th this is the wave equation for a inhomogeneous media i mean inhomogeneous as in temperature is changing or density is changing and and so on now uh, and I have, we have used p bar is constant okay uh, and you can actually write dt over dx in terms of d rho over dx also some people write in that form but the first thing to notice is this was given as a homework i think sometime back right uh, this equation is different from this equation yeah the equation for pressure appears different from the equation for velocity so whereas earlier in the classical case we had operator uh, do squared p let me write that down have an operator this is the wave operator 1 over c square do squared by do t squared minus do squared by do x squared times some variable chi is 0 and chi can be unsteady pressure i mean acoustic pressure acoustic velocity or or potential but now you see that you can't use the same operator and um, which i have here and use it on um, the velocity because they are different okay is that clear i think it's an important point you should make a note of of course i uh, just remember that i assume no mean flow and which uh, led to pressure is constant and that's uh, without it the equation gets much more uh, messed up now we have to have a solution procedure so what uh, 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 this is like a intuitive procedure uh, so we say we know that dx over dt equal to the characteristic so we can have this transformation and let's say we say we just hope that pressure is some some kind of function which is depend on area and temperature times some pressure which does not depend on area and temperature uh, some kind of uh, scaled pressure so we are hoping for a rescaling to occur so that we get a simpler equation so then if you substitute these two into the uh, earlier equations uh, the wave equation what you get is uh, this term this, this is the, the classical wave operator acting on this rescale pressure 
times something plus there is another term here which is operating on dp prime over dx plus there is another term over here which is operating on p itself and this looks so complicated that there is I mean I do not see any possibility of solving it. So, how to solve it we will do in the next class. So, this is like a so what we what we did is to derive a wave equation for uh, media which has non uniform temperature uh, both in terms of pressure and velocity. Now, then we, uh, we we are attempting to solve for pressure. So, we are hoping that we can rescale the pressure such that we can get the dependence on area and temperature out and then we can perhaps solve it in terms of the classical wave equation or some such thing. Uh, and But it is not coming out so easily, but is there a way to solve this that is what we will examine, we will stop here, thank you. Mm -hmm.